We all felt the air coming from around the pipe, from this joist here, hopefully not coming through this bunch of cables here, and hopefully not this one, but there should have been some air coming around where this <coughs> one penetrated, because we haven't done anything. We've just taken it through the membrane, and we haven't dealt with anything. And again, <coughs> on this one here. It's about how well you detail around there. So, you know, the devil is in the detailing in terms of how we address these areas. We've, we've finished a couple, but I'm just going to highlight how you actually finish some of the others. So the first one is a, a pipe collar made up with the membranes and the sealants. Doesn't need to be a specialist item. And the method that's used to, to manufacture these, albeit you do them yourselves generally, um, we haven't got a big enough industry with air tightness yet for someone to sit in a workshop producing these, although they do, if we look you know, to other European countries, um, people set up business making collars ready for air tightness. Needs a little bit of uh, forward thinking, you know, surveying the building as part of the overall approach to air tightness. I've got this type of pipe coming through here and another one coming through here, and we need to address, address the joists. So we make up templates, so we use you know, if we get serious about air tightness, you start to, to have small templates within the workshop that replicate what we've got coming through. So pipes tend to be of common sizes, so do timber joists, enough that we can use them as templates for what we've got coming through, through the, the hall. So we make this up. This then goes over the top, and we use the appropriate tapes to seal that up around. You can either use, with most of the tapes, you can either use scissors or a knife. Um, I prefer scissors. A lot of installers prefer a knife. If you get a decent sharp pair of scissors, you have just as much control over the cut, uh, especially when you're trying to work your way around details as you do with a knife. Trying to avoid creases, so we can get those as flat as possible. <coughs> They'll have different tapes for different applications. The tape I was using there, within the ease of a range, is for sticking membrane to membrane. So where I'm making up the patch around the outside, I can use one tape. The next bit I want to seal, so I've sealed around the back, I've sealed the membrane. In the collar that we made up, we had a seal around here, so we haven't got any weakness here. But I also need to seal the membrane to the actual pipe, because potentially we've got an air leakage around here as well. So. We'd use a tape within the respective range that seals the membrane to other materials. And then we're sealing the actual membrane We've sealed the collar to the background membrane, we've sealed around this junction here, and we've sealed the tape to the actual pipe itself. There's nowhere other than obviously through here, which that should be going to a service, which we're actually going to get, get air leakage with, within that building. We can do the same for joists, simple templates, using the template on top of the membrane, draw around it, cut a patch so that we can collar this over the top. and create a patch. Just to 
tip on the tapes, and it's, and it's the same for all manufacturers of tape. Don't stand there picking at the back of it, because it will take forever. If you, generally, if you slightly cup the, the front of the tape and run your finger across the front, it will actually catch on your fingers. So a lot of frustration that might be stood there, can't get the back off the tape, can be solved by just using the, the materials in the, in the right manner. As long as we've got these overlapping, obviously I'm trying to keep it neat on the, the others, but I'm starting to, to speed up, so they're not necessarily lining up perfectly, but we know that we've got an, air, an airtight seal all the way around. With the joist, we want to do a little bit more than we're not, we haven't created a seal, we haven't created a full collar, we've just created a patch that's going over the back. So we start to use the sealants to make sure that where the weaknesses are, which is the corners, that we can address the air tightness in that area. So a small bit of sealant in the corners. To allow us then to go around with a piece of tape so that as we go around the corners we're actually catching the fact that the, 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 the bits of fabric that we've we've cut with the main bit of the tape but as we hit the corners we're just squashing the actual sealant in around those areas to maintain that air tightness all the way around. And then just make sure that we seal that around the joist. And that one's airtight. We can make these collars up for, for 90 degrees very easily. It's just a case of working on a tabletop, cutting the shape around the actual patch, to, and then so you end up with two bits of fabric or of membrane, one to create the patch and one to create the actual collar around and, and sealing the two together. We can do the same for 45 degree angles, or 30 degree angles. It doesn't have to be a 90 degree detail. And we can still make the collars. I made this one yesterday for this pipe here. So this will actually just sleeve over this detail here. Again, the patch on the back. I cheated a little bit when I put this, the membrane up on the back in that I was able to identify the exact location of the, the pipe penetrations as I did those, so that the apertures that are coming through the membrane were very, very tight to, to the details so that I can make small patches on the back. When we've got something like this, as we're installing the membrane and we're trying to keep the membrane tight, we might have to sort of walk around the actual detail to, to get the detail, get the membrane to fit around it. Don't worry, cut a big hole in the, in the membrane in the back we just make this bit bigger so that the, the piece that goes on the on the background is already sealing that area so a bit of foresight in that area can actually speed things up when it comes to the installation process on site when we make this section up it's easier to work with more material than it is to work with fiddly little bits of material so i've made this collar quite large but i don't need that once this is dry and it's virtually dry we can just cut that to the size we need it Tapes don't go around corners, they go in straight lines. So we, we can make that. Now again, four more bits of tape, so bear with us, this is the last one of these, and then we just got one cable penetration to, to detail fairly quickly. Skin will only take to the plasterable tape. 
Four small bits of tape that size can detail that cable penetration without getting any leakage within, within that detail. And what you do is, if you would have noticed, this particular tape that I'm using actually has a split back. Um, it allows it to be folded in, into half and do one, one detail to another. Before plasterable tapes were on the market, then the, the tapes that had the split backs were those tapes that were used typically around window details so that you would fold this into, the, into this area here, allow you to stick it onto one material before folding it up onto the reveal to make sure that you've got a nice tight line in the, in the corner. The plasterable tapes tend to have the same, the same feature on them in that they have a split back so that the backing tape on these come off in two sections or in this case three sections to allow you to apply it to one surface before you start folding onto the other surface. The adhesion on most of the air tightness tapes are fairly strong. And what you'll find is if you start trying to do too much in one go is it will stick to one bit and then you'll catch and then you'll crease it. Then you haven't got uh, your air tightness line. But you can use that split back to your advantage for a cable detail and also when it comes to, to window details. For a cable penetration, we just make two cuts in each one roughly or just slightly wider than the cable itself. And I'm just, I'm not going to detail this in full, um, but what you do is you put that one on there in, in that respect. This collar that you're performing around the cable is, two, is doing two things for you. It's reinforcing the membrane in around the actual cable penetration. So from the point of view of potential for that to rip, you're reinforcing the area and around it. But you're also using one of these, one of these sections that you've cut to actually stick to the cable. So that then wraps around. And you do that four times. And when you've done that four times, you'll get a complete seal. You have to do the detailing to the best of your ability. So you have to adopt the principles that you, that you can undertake for cable penetrations, sealing around the back of the box to minimise the air leakage where we've got multiple cables coming through. You know, I've put six cables through this hole here. And what we've done is we've, re we've replicated this type of detail here but we've actually done it with a larger section. So we've joined sections of multi-tape together to make a wider section to do the same type of thing and wrap this around. But you'll notice, if I splay this open, that we've also addressed the fact that you've got air leakage through the cables themselves. So once we've got this detail around, around the outside, we pump sealant inside the actual cables, and then we wrap them all together as one unit.